One of our values is nature knows best. We use things that have been around for millions of years rather than introducing very new synthetic things that we have no feedback from nature on. By 2050, there's going to be more plastics than fish in our ocean. Inner, not black. The alternative to single-use plastics. Let's take a look. NotPla is a team of chemists, engineers, designers, entrepreneurs. We're developing new solutions that try to use seaweed instead of plastic for a lot of single-use applications, typically packaging for food service, electronic products, lots of things that we consume really quickly and packaging is thrown away. We started with OHO, which is a little bubble that can contain water or liquids, uh, where uh, we found a really good application for marathons, festivals, places where there is a, a big consumption in a very short amount of time and where in a way there is the highest chance of littering. Um, there is no waste. If you don't eat it, nature will eat it. Um, and that was really our starting point into this, uh, this journey. You said nature can eat it. How long yeah. does it take for it to, to go away? So typically it takes four to six weeks. But actually, um, it can take as little as 10 days in our wormery, where we test things side by side, breaks down faster than the peel of an orange. You mentioned you know, this, the sachets, um, and then you have some other uses for them. We, we started to put a lot of different things in the machine, see what happens, um, and that's when we realized that actually it could be a really good solution for condiments. We developed these ketchup sachets and um, actually realized with our partner, Just Eat, that um, we were still sending them in plastic boxes. So the next challenge was, what do we do about the box? Um, and so we, we started to realize that we didn't have to just make one product, but we could create a, like a catalog of different solutions. What was it that drew you towards focusing on ocean plastics? Yeah, I think it was just one of our kind of like interests, like why can't we make things more like nature? Um, and I think when we realized that if these things are gonna end up in the ocean, we could solve the problem by having something that actually belongs to the ocean anyway. That was something that was really interesting. And when you think about it, um, everything started in the ocean. So seaweed have been there for such a long time because of its diversity. There's about 12,000 species of seaweed, all with their own like DNA makeup, very different. Um, some species of seaweed are more different than a mushroom and a bear. Like That's the spectrum that you've got when you look at seaweed. Some of the seaweed grow very fast, so um, some of the seaweed we've tried in the lab grow up to a meter per day, so it's one of the fastest growing organisms on the planet. When you look at it, like it also has a lot of added value compared to things that grow on land. It doesn't require fresh water, it doesn't require uh, any fertilizer, um, and it's really a zero input crop. You just like, let it grow. You can't uh, micromanage it like we do with agriculture on land. As seaweed becomes more industrialized, is there is there a responsible way to farm it or to uh, take it from the open oceans? So that's the great advantage of farming, is that you can bring additional seaweed in places where it's maybe kind of like disappeared because we've uh, messed with the environment. But th there's lots of dead zones where water doesn't mix, nutrients doesn't flow, and there's not much life in those parts of the ocean. And seaweed can be the first actor to start restart, reboot that system and bring back that diversity, so. Awesome, well thank you. I'm gonna go down to your lab and chat to Louise, who's gonna teach me a little bit more about seaweed. Louise, hi, hi. Matthew. Matthew, nice to meet you. <laughs> so you, can you show me what's going on here? What are we gonna look at? So I'm gonna show you how we actually make the coating uh, that goes inside our box. Okay. Um, so I can show you the process over here. We get all the powders together. We can then blend it into a mixture with water. Um, this creates kind of a formulation that allows us to coat it evenly on the material on the paper. It's kind of like glue, yeah? Yeah, a little bit. Um, yeah. It's quite sticky. And this is kind of a, a demonstration of basically how it's done on industry. So this okay. is how we do it on the lab scale. Yeah. Love it. So how, do, how, how would this work in like the bigger, bigger machines? So there's lots of different coating processes. Mm -hmm. There's one which uses this rod. Uh, which is called a Maya bar coating, but there's also like loads of other methods. So we're currently looking at three different methods that we're scaling up. Cool. So can you show me more of this maybe in the product view so we can check out the products and maybe discuss a little bit more about the science and the chemistry behind them? Yeah, definitely. Cool. You can show them upstairs. All right, let's go. Thanks. So we're in the design studio. Can you give me a little bit about what we just looked at downstairs and like 
uh, actually how it works on the product. Yep, so we take that coating, we convert it into a box. So it depends on what the customer wants. We've got a takeaway box here. We've also got seaweed paper, which is actually using the waste product from our extraction process. That's what I can see in the paper too. Yep, so this is a waste fiber from the process of extracting the, the seaweed component that we use to make our OHO and also our coatings. So we actually found these waste fibers were really useful to incorporate into paper and reduce the dependency on virgin wood. This is another type of waste fiber from the milling process. We can also make sachets and um, some of these are water soluble as well, so we can actually drop them into water and they'll fully degrade. Cool. Can I see one of those? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's funny what you experience huh. with plastic and how your mind kind of thinks yeah. it's going to feel. It's totally different yeah. when it comes to natural materials. And the OHOs themselves are also quite squidgy and quite yeah. fun, so we can test one of those if you want. Yeah, sure. Oh, okay, so cool. So you actually bite a bit off. <laughs> There's a little, little soup slurp there. <laughs>